The Survival of Britain. Welcome to Bible in the News. This article was written by Paul Billington and it's commenting on the Scottish referendum that almost brought an end to the United Kingdom. To understand the outcome of the referendum and particularly the constitutional chaos that it is about to follow, we need to be aware of what the historical roots that are involved. And today, not many people are aware of them. It was in 1603 that the English and Scottish crowns were united in the reign of James I, who also set in motion the birth of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible, also called the Protestant Bible. That was just over 400 years ago. This was the establishment of the Protestant throne, but it was another century before the Union of England and Scotland took place in 1707. In those days, It was a running battle between Protestant and Catholics, the remnants of which we have seen more recent years in Northern Ireland. But for those who may think that the Catholic-Protestant competition is now locked away in history, the recent referendum is a reminder that the struggle is not over. Witnesses to the so-called Orange March that took place in Edinburgh last week, when thousands marched in support of a no vote, they wanted the United Kingdom to remain intact. What we have to understand in all of this is the unseen and devious hand of the Vatican, whose long-term objective has been the destruction of the United Kingdom and the Protestant throne. To most people today, that issue seems irrelevant. It is not mentioned, but the Vatican does see it that way. They have been working hard in order to bring about a Roman Catholic Britain, hence the issue sometimes discussed with regard to the Protestant succession of the throne and whether the monarch can marry a Catholic. The Catholic Church has been working to break up the United Kingdom for a very long time now. It has been a subtle and crafty promotion of Scotland's independence, using patriotic song about Bonnie Prince Charlie, who sought the throne but fled over the sea to Skye. Then there was the battle or massacre of Glencoe, about which another Scottish song cast the Catholics in a good light and the precedence of proud Edward's army in a bad light. Then there were more movies such as the Roman Catholic Mel Gibson's Braveheart, promoting Scottish independence and so on. The film represents William Wallace as a Scottish rebel who leads an uprising against the cruel English ruler Edward, the Longshanks, who wishes to inherit the crown of Scotland for himself. When he was a young boy, William Wallace's father and brother, along with many others, lost their lives trying to free Scotland. Once he loses another of his loved ones, William Wallace begins a long conquest to make Scotland free, once and for all, along with the, ins- with the assistance of Robert the Bruce. If you ever come across the book The Papal Conquest by Alexander Robertson, published in 1909, read it. It is history now, but sheds so much light on Catholic attempts to undermine Britain. If you have ever pondered the moral decline of Britain, read the chapter entitled Promoting Moral Deterioration. Then there is the book by former Prime Minister of Britain, W.E. Gladstone, entitled Vaticanism. More up-to-date reading can be suggested, such as The Abolition of Britain by Peter Hitchens, who shows how the King James Version of the Bible has been pushed out by new translations. If the purpose of all this was to revive the church and to make it more part of the world, then it has not succeeded, so we must wonder if they have other overriding purposes. A quote from the book. Then there was the book by John Redwood, MP, The Death of Britain, showing now the government's devolution plans will create more tension and conflict rather than less. The end result will be a more divided, more factuous, more overgoverned, more overregulated United Kingdom. In other words, a loss of the freedom. Add to that the speech by Prime Minister David Cameron this week in which he promises more power to Scotland, then more power to England, Wales and Northern Ireland, What on earth is next? Home rule for the Isle of Man, 
the United Kingdom may have survived the referendum, but it is now going to be divided by devolution as the country is divided up into regional governments. Britain faces a constitutional crisis if Mr Cameron and the political leaders press ahead with their promises of more devolution. It will mean, a stor it will mean stormy seas ahead. So what can we make of it all? The answer is a simple one. Britain has turned her back on the Bible, once called the secret of England's greatness. There can, only, there can be no rosy future for a nation that turns against God. As Psalm 9 verse 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that shall forget God. That is our lesson from these events. Britain must be humbled in order to bring repentance. Only then can we say that Britain has survived. Join us again next week for more news connected with the Bible. Thank you for listening.